Yo, what is going on guys? Winner Kills here and welcome to a brand new Locals feature match. I believe this video is going up on a Saturday, I believe. Yeah, Saturday, and I am currently at the Toronto Regionals. Wish me luck. Um, yeah. But here we have uh, kind of a mirror match, sort of, not really. We have Adventurer Destiny Despia on the right versus Brand Despia on the left. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a pretty interesting match. Uh, my good friend uh, Pablo, actually, on the left here... Um, hasn't been to our locals in a long time because he is originally from spain um lives out in california from time to time so um he was able to stop by for the week um it was really nice to see him so i had to put him on the feature match um you guys have seen him on the channel before a long time ago in some like the 3v3 vlogs um so yeah shout outs to pablo um and yeah it was really great to see him um, and hopefully uh, we see him back at uh, our locals again soon. Unfortunately, I will not be at locals to see him on Saturday because I'll be at the regional, but um, it was good to see him at this locals uh, nonetheless. So we will see uh, a fusion destiny getting ashed, um, causing a turn to be passed, which, uh, you know, it's just how it be sometimes, right? And then we're going to see Alibur get hit with a droplet pitching Celestial. Preventing his opponent from getting access to Brand Fusion, which you just kind of have to. And we'll see him swinging for 900 and set to and pass. We'll see him pick up a copy of Tragedy. Uh, Tragedy, Droplet, and Draco back, chilling in the hand here. Not really what you want to see. Um, you know, if you're the Adventure Despia player right now. Um, fortunately, no way to really trigger that Tragedy. To go ahead and get a search of a Branded. Uh, monster. So we'll see him pass turn here. And we're going to see our Brenda Despia player try again on the left. Going to go ahead and discard Tragedy to negate uh, the Illibur, at least attempt to. And since he pitched a monster, um, he can respond with Super Poly here, discarding Edge of Chain. Diffuse the two Alibers away for Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Which I believe just requires two dark monsters. Um, let me just go ahead and double check here. Starving Venom. What a card. Yeah, two dark monsters on the field except tokens. So he'll he'll get Alibur Search. Um, and he's also still going to get the effect of Edgem Chain 2 since it did hit the grave. Um, as part of the cost for Super Poly, which is to discard one card. So just go search, like, two probably the best spells in the entire deck. Patchwork and Branded Fusion. And have, like, a 2500 or 2800 body on field to kind of back it up. Um, so this is probably just going to be game here with the Branded Fusion and Patchwork resolving. It's just a matter of how he will go about doing it. Dramaturge accidentally flying out of the deck there. So we'll see him add poly and chain, as is the standard. And we'll see him activate branded fusion here. And we'll see him definitely dump Fallen of Albaz, but it looks like he'll also send Fairy Tale Snow. So it'll go for the Albion here. And then I can imagine Albion will banish Albaz and the Starving Venom. So getting to keep the Albion on board is always kind of a nice luxury if you're the branded deck. So a fuse away with those two. Fallen of Albaz and a fusion monster. To go for the Mirror Jade, the Ice Blade Dragon. Coming out at 3,000. And that is, I believe, I believe Albion has... I don't know this offhand, which I feel like I should, right? Um... LBN has 25, so he's got 5,500 damage on board. Needs to deal 71. And with that Fairy Tale Snow Engrave, though, um, not enough for a game here, regardless. Or, well, yeah, I think it is. 55 plus 1850. Yeah, that is game by 250, so. Um, did the math wrong there for a second, but that is going to be game. Fairy Tale Snow coming in very, very clutch. And we will see them move into a game two. 
where I imagine we will see the branded Adventurer Despia or Destiny deck go first, opening with a copy of Foolish Burial and opening. Um, interesting to see no standby phase or draw phase opening here. Just deciding to go with the Foolish Burial. I mean, that's definitely got to be a misplay. I feel like you 100% still draw phase opening to get Alibur. Um Because there's no way your opponent ashes that, right? There's absolutely just no way. And he has views, like, his hand is, like, kind of absurd. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we're, we'll still see Enchantress rip the ash out of the hand regardless. Um... And now we're going to see him activate opening. Pitching Alibur. This will probably just go ahead and spec an Alibur. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it doesn't really matter here. I mean, the only thing you're, like, kind of playing into is Droll. Um, but, uh, yeah. I know my friend Joel here on the right hasn't really played that much this format. Um, right? Still getting acquainted with his deck. Um in my opinion, and I think I already talked to him about this, like, probably wouldn't play um, the Destiny Fusion engine in the deck because it is just, as I told him, kind of a win more card, and you're adding unnecessary bricks to the already very, you know, consistent deck. And in a deck where, like, seeing Branded Fusion is so incredibly important, why would you want to, like, run other cards in the deck that decrease your odds of seeing it? Um... So yeah, Brand Fusion, basically free to resolve here since the Ash has already been forced on the Enchantress. Um, so we're going to see him go ahead and activate the Brand Fusion. Going to go ahead and send Light Hextail Fusion and um, Albaz. There's another card I told me probably shouldn't play too, just because, like, why send Light Hextail when you could just send Fairy Tail Snow? You know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's just a way better card. And yes, going for Dragoon is cute, but, like, you just don't need it. Um, as, as the format and the past format has shown, Despia decks just, they don't need Dragoon because Mirror Jade's kind of a crazy card, you know? Especially since you can Mirror Jade like a thousand times during the opponent's turn. Um, you have it on board, you ad-lib it back, and then you super poly into another one. That's three Mirror Jades. It's kind of a lot of a Mirror Jades. It's a lot of banishes to play through. It's a lot of end phase, um, recursion. So we're gonna go ahead and see him use... The Albion and the Banishing Albion and Banishing uh, Albaz for Mirror Jade. And then we're going to see Branded, or not Branded Fusion. I, all these Fusion cards, I apologize. Activate Fusion Destiny, which is a card we really do not see too much of nowadays. Um, because of Anaconda getting the axe on the ban list, as it should have. Um, along with those super clutch and crucial Halk and Shooting Riser limits, honestly... Gotta give a round of applause to Konami for making those well-needed hits this format. I mean, the amount of times I would have my opponent summon Halk three times or Shooting Riser like three times in my turn was just getting out of hand, so I'm glad they they, they, they addressed that. Um, but yeah, jokes aside, we'll see him go for the, the Enforcer and the Mirror Jade and uh, one card in hand. Not a terrible end board. Could have been played out a little bit better. Um... But, you know, it's still a pretty good end board. The DPE really not doing too much in this matchup. I think the only thing DPE, I think, is checking is probably Albaz. Um, and I guess maybe Chimera, since it doesn't target. So if he has a Poly Engrave, he can clear the big 3300 body. Um, but also Mirror Jade does the same thing. I don't know. The draw two next turn, though, will be very clutch. And I do see a D-barrier in the opening hand here for our uh, Despia-branded player, um, which is good. I mean, like, siding D-barrier going second might seem weird, and, you know, I think it's kind of weird, but, like, at the same time, the card is just, like, you completely stop their follow-up, which is insane. So I can kind of get behind it, especially if you have, like, the room to side it in going second. You know what I mean? I think it makes a lot of sense. Because, like, yeah, it's it's one of those cases where, like, the card's also kind of a board breaker. It's like siding, like, or seeing certain cards, like, TC Boo and Goes and Rivalry going second. Like, they're cards that are going to force an interruption or they're going to cripple their follow-up to the point where they really don't have a lot of crackback. Um, so we'll see him go for the uh, Quartus here. 
with the chain and the tragedy and we'll see chain grab patchwork and the tragedy to grab aliber so he has aliber patchwork d barrier and one other card in hand which i think is a mercurier can't really tell from this angle and it looks like we're gonna see mirror jade here uh go ahead and dump a lubelion uh okay we'll see we'll see him send a, uh, is there i mean is there a reason you don't just send albion there there's no way he only plays one albion there's actually just no way um but yeah okay so we'll see him mirror j the quartus which will trigger quartus effect to go ahead and summon a fallen of albaz um or i think a card that lists it in this text like a monster i don't know it's gonna get fallen of albaz which is huge which is allowing him to keep extending here into the board um and this will definitely force dpe if anything um so i think right now it's it's a question of whether or not our Brandon Despy player wants to use the Albaz here, and it looks like he is going to. He's going to pitch the patchwork, um, and he's going to chain DPE, popping itself and the Albaz, making sure it does not resolve, because it has to use itself on the field. If it cannot use itself on the field on resolution, the effect does not apply. And then DPE effect in yard. Go ahead and, and summon back a Destiny hero, and now we're just going to see him normal summon Alistair, or Alistair. I mean, it's basically Alistair, okay? It's basically Alistair. Give me a break. Um, activate Branded Fusion. And it looks like he's going to go ahead and send Fairytale Snow. And another copy of Albaz. Let's go ahead and get into the Albion. And then Albion into Mirror Jade. And then Mirror Jade um, can basically just like check the DPE next turn. Which is kind of nice. And then he's going to go ahead and fuse... Yep, yep, the Albion and the Albaz into the Mirror Jade. And at this point, well, the nice thing is, because he didn't send an Albion, for whatever reason, I don't know. He does not have any follow-up outside of DPE. Um, and I guess if DPE and Dragoon are in the extra deck, um, maybe those are the slots that are making it so he didn't have another Albion to send. Um... But Joel, if you're watching this, my buddy, you gotta switch up that extra deck. You you gotta switch it up. Um, you gotta, okay? You gotta do it. But, either way, he also has D-Barrier hand too. So this game is like kind of seeming, seeing, uh, let me try to say that again. Seemingly unwinnable at this point. Uh, now we're gonna see Mirror Jade. Go ahead and activate. Banishing his opponent's Mirror Jade. And that will trigger Mirror Jade's effect. Because it was Fusion Summon. But he will Mercurier it. So, okay, I was right. That was a Mercurier in hand. And then he's just going to go to Battle Phase. Albert attack over Albert. And then Mirror Jade get in for 3,000 direct. So pretty much addressing everything here. The only thing he's not checking is the Celestial follow-up. Um, yeah. And also, D-Barrier will stop DPE from coming back. Um, so we'll have to summon back, like, a Celestial or a Dasher. Um, which is also nice. And then NFA is we're going to see his Albion trigger here. And looks like he's looking at Branded Banishment to go ahead and set. Because I don't know if he has any Despia or Fallen of Albaz engraved a target to add back off of a Branded in Red. If I saw his graveyard correctly there, so going for Brandon in red might be foolish. So it looks like he will just grab Branded Fusion um, for a crackback, which is pretty good crackback. Um, I don't know, I just love saying crackback. And he top decks a Branded Fusion, but looks like in the draw phase, we're going to see... I mean, oh my goodness, what a top deck. Um, deck was treating him very nice there. It's just unfortunate he did not have the Albion descent, because I think that would have... Uh, maybe not have changed things so much because of D barrier, still barrier. Like, um, so he cannot summon back DPE here. So, 
Um, and the effect of uh, DP already applied, so he will still get to summon here and resolve the effect. Um, so he'll get Dasher out on the field. Um, and he could crash this... Uh, I think you have to crash Dasher here. Um, you have to crash the Dasher. Because that way you get Griffin Rider on board, and then you can set Brand Infusion, and then you can Celestial Draw 2. Not doing you a ton, but if it draws you into, like, an Alibur or a Brandon in red, like, you kind of have a way to play, but it looks like he's just going to go ahead and scoop it up there anyways. Maybe he didn't see the line. Either way, we're going to see uh, my friend Pablo here on the left beat my friend Joel on the right. So Brandon Despia taking the win here, 2-0. If you guys want to see more of my content, click on one of the videos popping up in the bottom of the screen right now. And last but not least, a huge shout out goes to our Divine Level channel members who are Tweeter0226, Pony Stark, Cadillac84, Justin Lamb, and HZH Cyber. Thank you guys so much as always for your kind and generous support of the channel.